Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the orbital motion of the planet Jupiter. The planet Jupiter, just like all other planets in the solar system, revolve around the Sun. For Jupiter, the orbital period is 11.862 years, so almost 12 years to make one trip around the Sun. That's because Jupiter is quite a bit farther from the Sun than the Earth, and the farther you are from the Sun, the slower the object will travel. So in this case, the speed, the orbital speed of Jupiter, is only slightly over 13 kilometers per second, where for the Earth it's almost 30 kilometers per second, just, just shy of that. Now, the distance from Jupiter to the Sun varies quite a bit throughout its orbit. At the closest approach, at perihelion, the distance is 740.5 million kilometers, which is 4.95 astronomical units. Remember that an astronomical unit is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. But at aphelion, Jupiter is 816.6 million kilometers away from the Sun, which is 5.46 astronomical units. The average of those two numbers is about 5.2 astronomical units. The reason for that big difference is that the eccentricity for Jupiter is about 0 0.0489, which is about three times the eccentricity of the Earth. So the Earth has, much, has an orbit that is much closer to a circle as compared to Jupiter. Jupiter is more elongated, has more of an elliptical shape. And so you can see that the difference in distance from that to that, that's, oh, that's 60, 70, 70, 76 million kilometers difference in the distance from Jupiter to the Sun, depending upon where in its orbit it is. Now, if we take Kepler's third law, then we know that the period squared equals the distance to the planet cube. Now, that means that the period has to be in years, and the distance has to be in astronomical units. So then we can solve this equation for r, the average distance between the Sun and Jupiter, that would be the cube root of the period squared. So we take 11.862, we square that, we then take the cube root of that, and we get the average distance to be indeed 5.2 astronomical units. So as you can tell, that's the average distance between these two values, and that is how during Kepler days, we were able to find the relative distance of the planets by just measuring the time it took for them to make one trip around the Sun. Now, we also have what we call the synodic period of the planet. And the synodic period is where the planet will appear at one point in time, and then where it will appear in the sky at the same location sometime later. And so you can see here that the Earth will travel around the Sun once every 365 days, and the synodic period for Jupiter is almost 390 days, about 398.88 days. That's, I guess, almost 400 days. And the reason for that is because as Jupiter travels slower around the Sun, the Earth will make one trip in a year, but then, of course, Jupiter won't be there anymore. Jupiter will have moved somewhat, so how much longer does the Earth have to travel so that the line between the Sun, Earth, and Jupiter is exactly the same as before, and that will be 398.88 days. So essentially, let's call it 399 days, 365, 399, so that's about 34 days more, a little bit over a month longer, before the Earth is back in a location that Jupiter will be right above the Earth in the same location in the sky. That happens every 399 days or so. So that's what we mean by the synodic period, which of course is very different from the orbital period. That takes about 12 years for the planet to make one trip around the Sun. And that is how it is.